Greetings, my fellow ants on the ant hill, or if you prefer, great cosmic beings, depending, I suppose, on what you think our status is in the universe. I'm Stephen Berlin, and I'm going to be talking today about false remembrance in dreams. Now, this is a topic that will always be near and dear to my heart. Why? Because I had an individual get angry, even hostile toward me. I know that's hard to imagine. Some years back, for using that expression. Uh, he vehemently thought that I should use a term like dreamed remembrance because by introducing the word false, I was essentially closing the door to any discussion before the discussion even begins. All right, I understand that perspective. Chill. Dreamed remembrance. That's fine with me. Who cares? We're talking about the same thing. That's what's important. Now, I also want to point out while we're at it that I didn't coin the term. The term was used by Frederick von Eden, and he was the same guy who coined the term lucid dreaming. And there's a lot of people that don't like the word lucid. They think it should be called conscious dreaming. So for those of you out there that get your underwear up in a bundle about terminology, that's okay. You know, kindly go dig up his corpse and kick it. You know, and leave this one that's still breathing alone. Okay, false remembrance, here we go. I was walking down a street in my dream, and I remember the houses and the lawns, and, and this wave of nostalgia came over me. And I thought, I'm in my, my, this is my old paper route in upstate New York when I was growing up, you know, and it was, it was great to be back in the neighborhood. Then I woke up, and I was recalling my dream, and I thought, what? That street I just saw doesn't look like my old paper route. As a matter of fact, it doesn't look like any street I've ever seen anywhere, any place, any time in my entire life. So, for lack of a better explanation right now, let's call it false remembrance. Now, how about the people in our dreams? We have familiar faces, our family, friends, co-workers. There's a lot of strange faces also in our dreams. Now, what I want you to begin noticing in your dreams is that some of these strange faces in your dreams, you're pretty tight with in your dreams. You, they'll be your comrade for, throughout the whole dream, your associate throughout the whole dream. And you're going to feel like, in the dream, when you wake up, you're going to realize, man, in the dream, that I really felt that he or she was my best friend. I mean, we had a connection. I mean, I could feel it. You know, I'm sure I knew him but, or her. And I, but I can't, but, you know, the face, doesn't match any face in my waking life at all. False remembrance. Now an offshoot of this is how we watch movies and TV and we feel like we know people, you know, by seeing them on, on the screen. So I'm going to use myself as an example here. Let's say, for instance, you dreamed of me tonight, tomorrow night, whenever. Now, I think it would be fair to say that you would probably in your dream feel as though you knew me. You know, because I feel like I know the people I see on TV. Although I know I don't really know them. Or they're, I mean, that they, that, and that they don't really know me. Now, the curious phenomenon in dreams is, if you saw me, not only would you feel like you knew me, you would believe also that I knew you. We would interact as though we knew each other. You would feel a sense that we had some kind of history together. And that would be a false remembrance. Now let me give an example that will show you how common false remembrance is in dreams, at least in my opinion. You know, we're all taught when, we're, when we become lucid dreamers to look for anomalies in our dream, things that are kind of strange or out of the ordinary, and then use those anomalies by various methods to recognize we're dreaming and become lucid. Now to get to where I'm going with this, let me give an example. I've got a patio door right here. Now, I had a dream now, I live out in the middle of the desert, okay? Now, uh, I had a dream, and I walked out this patio door, I opened it up, and I stepped out onto my deck, which I don't have. And I looked at the ocean, which isn't there. And I didn't wake up, I didn't become lucid, it seemed okay with me, evidently, and I went on with my dream. Now, clearly, that had to have been a feeling of, this is okay. I remember this is always being this way. A false remembrance. 
Okay, now, for what are some theories on how false remembrances might really be true for those of you that like, you know, the appearance of truth in your life? Good luck with that. All right. One, let me give you examples that I've heard. A rational example, going back to like that street that I remembered, like my paper up. One example is, okay, your mother, when you were young, was rolling you down the street in a stroller, and your mind took in the vision of this street, and you forgot it because you were in your pre-verbal years, one or two, and now many years later, your mind dishes it back out, and so you authentically recall it. You just don't remember it because you were so little, and so that's why you had that feeling of such strong remembrance. Okay, well, that's plausible. Now, there's uh, quite a few people, and this is a very plausible theory. We have a, blank, uh, a bank of dreaming memories and a bank of waking memories, and they're not easily accessible one unto the other. There's actually been some studies on this. Now, therefore, that street I saw in my dream isn't accessible. That memory wasn't accessible to my waking memory, but maybe I dreamed about that street before, maybe multiple times. Therefore, when I was in the dream state and I saw the street, I remembered it because I had a previous dream memory of it. That's also plausible. Now we get into the more metaphysical things. A lot of religions and metaphysical schools of thought believe in reincarnation. And just like the uh, uh, deja vu experience in waking life, you, you see something, you really feel a strong sense of having been there before. Well, logical conclusion, must have been in one of my past lifetimes. All right, now how about parallel universes, parallel realities? You know, in physics, that's almost legitimate to talk about now. We're going from string theory to M theory, and multiverses, you know, it's fascinating. Okay, well, maybe that street I saw in my dream exists in a parallel universe or reality. It's there, then, now, intertwined in the past, present, future. You know, maybe, it's possible. I had one lady tell me once, oh, I had a dream and my friend had the same dream the same night and I was dreaming her memories and she was dreaming mine. Really? Okay, that's cool. Uh, and how about aliens? Well, maybe we're organic computers put here by aliens. And, uh, you know, and, our, and it's, we got programs going on in there and so a memory is an executable program, you know, to keep it all glued together. And, uh, or maybe aliens just like to bother you at night and plant false memories in there and somebody's sitting on Mars with a mouse. I mean, you get what I'm saying. Now, I'm not making fun of any of these. I'm really not. Uh, because, why am I not making fun? Because, as I pointed out before, your reality, your experiences in your lifetime, and I used the expression before from the cradle to the grave, in your, the package of your life, let's say, it's real. What you believe is true, is true for you. I mean, and, what, and what's going on in me is mine. And, and sure, maybe I'm you and you're me, but that's, we're getting too far into philosophy there, and I'm here to talk about dreams. So I'm not making fun of anything. Whatever you believe is great. I, I have no issues with that. But the point I'm trying to make out for the purpose of this, that I'm trying to make for the purpose of this topic is that if we want to make false remembrances true somehow, it's going to be because of a belief system that we attach to that. If you're a scientist, you're going to think false, remember, false remembrances are brain chemistry, and you're going to want research and scientific method and statistics. And if you're metaphysical, you're going to put that spin on it. And you, you see what I mean. And so it all boils down to us attaching a belief system to it. And beliefs and belief systems, and what caused all the friggin' wars in the world, the hatred, the, uh, the conflict, the bigotry, the... Uh, can't mankind just get over this, you know? Okay, I'm philosophizing again. So, that's it. Next I'm going into the geography and navigation of dreams, how to get around. And I, boy, I, I make these things so long that they really push the limits. So I know that's hard to do. So next time you're in the grocery store, make sure you buy yourself some popcorn. <laughs>